안녕하십니까? 이존 치과의 손영희입니다. Greetings. I am Dr. Sonyoungi of Eagle Dental Clinic. Today, we're going to look at this case. It is a full mouth case in the lower. In the case of this patient, there's only number 46 remaining. After extraction, the patient has been using temporary denture. Gingival healing is somewhat complete and now we will proceed with surgery. Surgery is going to be done using one guide. Total of 8 implants will be placed. Number 33, 34, 35, 36, 43, 44, 45, and 46. If you look at the patient's ridge, there are no major precautions that need to be taken. As for GBR, after placing implant in number 46 in the remaining space in the format of gap filling, bone graft will be done. Let's look at the surgical clip. Oh. Okay. 
Sarıla. Okay. I will care. Surgery is complete. Let's look at the surgical results. If you look at the panoramic image, one guide was used to place the implants. So they have been placed very nicely. This is a ridge after extraction. Template was adapted. Three anchor screws were used to fixate the template. To check the level of adaptation of template. As you can see, after template is adapted and fixated using anchor screw, the gingiva is bleached. 
The white color indicates that template has been adapted appropriately. If the color of gingiva remains intact despite fixating using anchor screw, then, then it means that adaptation has not been done properly and you need to adjust it to proceed with accurate surgery. This is mirrored image, so it is the opposite. This is the right side and only in the area where immediate implant placement was performed, collagenated bone graft was used, AOS collagen was used. Stabilization suture was performed. In this clip, I would like to emphasize the following. When I first planned for implant surgery, the implant depths was designed to be about one millimeter deeper. In the case of a healed ridge, when you place implants, there's a higher possibility of drill being interfered by surrounding bone. When using one guide system, you can use flattening drill and then use initial drill. But as you've seen in this video, if you need to prep significant amount of bone using flattening drill, then it can be very difficult. Therefore, in order to reduce the amount of bone removed, you need to use initial drill to remove the bone in the center point first and then use a flattening drill. In other words, you don't use initial drill full depths because it can't go in because of the barrels. You need to remove the surrounding bone using flattening drill. If you do this, you may be able to remove the surrounding bone using flattening drill more easily. In the case of placing implants in the lower right and left, at times there can be excessive insertion torque. In the case of mandible, at times, template and implant driver can get stuck. When you have fixated template using anchor screw, then it can be very difficult. But you can anticipate situ situations ahead. When you place implant using the engine, at times it can stop even though implant has not gone halfway through due to excessive torque. Don't just try to place the implant hand driven all the way. You need to place the implant after expanding the whole size in order to prevent excessive insertion torque or implant to driver getting stuck. I want to emphasize again when you do a full mouth case and if the implant driver gets stuck then things can get very difficult. In that case, you need to remove all the anchor screw and remove the template and then connect the anchor screws again to proceed with surgery. In that case, then time-wise, it can be very devastating and therefore I do not recommend placing the implant hand-driven if there is excessive torque. In the case of this patient, I believe that there will be no major issues in doing loading after 8 weeks. When you do guided surgery, one of the problems we face is that some people may feel that irrigation is not done properly all the way because the template hole is small and irrigation is done only through the hole. You may worry about heat being generated. In my opinion, I don't think heat will be generated, but there can be excessive bone chip because irrigation is not done properly. As shown in the surgical video, in between drilling, you need to do irrigation in order to remove bone chip within the drill hole. Second, One guide drill has excellent cutting power and you can do full depth drilling from the start but I believe it is better to do it three times in an incremental fashion. Then you can prevent bone being cut without irrigation. This is the end of the surgical clip.
I hope my tips would be of help when you face similar clinical situations. So thank you for watching the video.